Good morning everyone. Uh, I hope you are surviving these late winter storms that we're having here in Colorado. Talk about miserable. But I know you skiers and boarders are probably loving it. But, uh, yes, it was all clear the other day. Uh, I'm at probably 8,500 feet here. Uh, just hiking the dogs on a friend's property. And uh, one of the multiple walks of the day. This is the second one. A little bit late in the day, but never mind. They'll survive. So yeah, it's just really sloppy out. So these are the days. And yesterday, what, whoops, when it was so miserable, that uh, really the days that count. If you can push through those days on your activity, you know, the, the good weather days, sorry, I just whacked the mic. Uh, the good weather days are just going to be cake. Uh, you want to shoot for a minimum of 30 minutes daily. 60 is ideal. The more the merrier. So breakfast this morning was... Hey Corona. Okay honey. Yeah breakfast this morning was steel cut oats with a few little macadamia nuts, maybe an ounce, ounce and a half maybe. Here's some dried fruit, some cinnamon, and some nutmeg for a little flavor flav. And it is, I think noon. Yep, don't be too surprised. Is it? Sorry. Oh well. Wow. Actually, ten to one. I had a busy morning, but um, yeah. So that was what four, five hours ago. I guess I ate breakfast about eight, and uh, hey. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I could eat, but then I can always eat. But uh, yeah, I'm not really hungry at all. I was doing a bunch of stuff around the house. So that's always a good way to start your day. Um, we do, I'm gonna fall over here, so get ready. Um, <laughs> sorry, lost my train of thought by trying not to fall over. Uh, yeah, we do the um, the steel cut oats. We generally will cook in the instant pot, uh, which is just an electric pressure cooker. Uh, we use it for so much stuff. Uh, probably steel cut oats, which take about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. And then um, rice is the other thing we use it for. You know, several times a week on both of those and then you can just you know, cook regular food in it um, there's one really good noodle dish I think from vegan under pressure um, so it's one one pot cooking you can uh, saute everything in the instant pot with the uh, top off and then when you've uh, done all your veggies you can just throw in throwing your noodles and your water and everything and then just uh, lock it down. Dang, I think it only takes like five minutes uh, cooking the noodles in there and the peanut sauce. Oh, so good. Maybe I'll have that for dinner tonight. But uh, yeah, it's, it's habits and routines. Uh, yeah, and that is what makes a whole food plant-based diet much easier to do is just breaking it up I think initially just break it up for this meal I will not have any animal products and you know you can do that once a day now, even even once a week like a meatless Monday type thing 
you can um, really start to adjust your cravings and your wants and needs um, and then switch into you know maybe two meals a day that have no animal uh, products in them uh, the hardest thing for me is probably cheese and probably seafood um, the meat itself it doesn't yeah I didn't really I don't remember really struggling so much with that I and mean, don't get me wrong I was a definitely a meat and potatoes guy um, oh god yep this could be the bad bit yeah uh, definitely a meat and potatoes guy you know I, I grew up in a very working class family in England so yeah we uh, often would have um, like lamb stew my mum would use neck of lamb because that was about the cheapest cut or liver and onions although my dad hated that much to everybody's amusement when we were having liver and onions um, you know Sundays if uh, if we had a Sunday roast very rarely would it be beef but chicken or pork would be the most common ones but uh, that stuff you know, my mum who's almost 90 um, whenever I go home to England to visit um, still <laughs> still struggles Oops. still struggles with the fact that I'm not doing you know regular regular food um, as far as she's concerned and I'm like yeah, just give me what you're cooking just don't put any meat or gravy on it <laughs> so it's those little those little changes you make and you stick to all the time that will become a habit and then you know you just in the end you won't even think about it you'll just be making better choices you know, we try and in the evenings for our evening meals um, we'll often have salad you know I might um, I might grill some tofu with that Kim loves a steamed artichoke I have no idea why but uh, way too much work to eat one of those damn things um, but yeah or we'll do some nuts and seeds on it for um, just a little protein because you just don't need that much uh, but salads in the evenings is a very common pattern for us or even a, uh, a juice uh, not really a juice more of a blend so you just uh, coconut water and then uh, just throw kale and spinach and berries and a little frozen mango, a little frozen peach, uh, flax seeds, very important. Get your DHA. And uh, sometimes turmeric, sometimes a little beetroot. Kim's a lot more adventurous when it comes to the juice uh, blends than I am. Uh, I kind of find one I like and try and stick with it. But uh, yeah, and you just. You don't go to bed full, but you are nutritionally full. Uh, you may not be uh, bursting at the seams. Oops. See, that's the other thing about hiking in these horrible conditions. It, <laughs> it will force you to work on your balance whether you want to or not. If you're not slipping on the ice or mud, you're. Uh, tripping over stuff crossing a little creek there <laughs> just some runoff but uh, yeah so this is um, this area I'm hiking in uh, is, is actually private land one of our friends bought and uh, it's about 40 acres so the perimeter 
if you walked it would be approximately one mile. Now we're zigzagging all through the property, so probably a mile and a half uh, total. I'm uh, pretty slow, Kim's fast, but uh, she does well adjusting her speed for me or I just lead usually. But um, what, I, what I have noticed is in the couple of years I've been really strict. Um, my endurance is way better than it was. Um, and I'm taking less pain medication. I uh, have chronic pain from a femur fracture in my left leg a few years ago. So my um, I think it's my fascial pain. Uh, I've done rehab, I've done massage, I've done acupuncture, I've done red lights and blue lights and <laughs> all the other kinds of crap that a lot of times will work. I'm not as good about ooh, I'm not as good about doing my stretches as I should be. But um, I still get in you know, 10,000 or more steps a day <laughs> and about a thousand slides. So, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so, we'll try not to. <laughs> We'll try not to die here. <laughs> at least, uh, <laughs> at least there'll be witnesses, <laughs> or a witness if no one watches. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I have to work really hard at that. Um, yeah, and there's a there's a very fine balance for me. Um, uh, The steep bit. Yeah, there's a uh, fine balance for me when I get to, I'm getting up into 20,000, 25,000 steps a day. It's uh, the next day's not good for me, uh, which is what interferes very much with my uh, multi -day, day hikes and overnights and stuff. So I do have to try and find that balance. And for me, 10,000 steps is about four miles, maybe a little more. Just making sure the dogs aren't chasing anything they shouldn't be. So it's just doing this every day, because I have the dogs, you know, I'm forced to, even on the days when I'm feeling bad. I actually do have to medicate. I know we'll still medicate if I have to. If I know I've got a big day, like I'm doing Capital Creek or something, you know, that's uh, I think seven, eight miles in and the same back. I mean, I can do it, which is pretty, pretty miraculous for me. Um, but it's very hard work. And I know the next day, you know, I'm not really going to be able to do that much. Uh, unless I medicate, and I, I, I won't hesitate to if I need to, but uh, it'll happen.